just open up your mouth. All you got to do is give God some praise. Give God some glory. I know it's been rough on this week, but give God some praise. I know you've been struggling, but give God some praise. I know things ain't been right, but give God some praise. Why? Because you're coming out. Why? Because God is moving. Why? Because God is about to fix it. Why? God is about to touch it. God is about to do it on today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. We need some things to break in this place. We need some things to shake off in this place on today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Of our praise. Hallelujah, right? Hallelujah, where you are. Hallelujah. I just believe God. I come into God's house with expectancy. I come into God's house looking for God to do something different. Looking for God to move mightily. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came in here for. I don't know what you came in here expecting. But I came in here expecting the glory of God to fall fresh on us one more time. Hallelujah in this place. We don't know this may be our last time. Someone wrote a song and said this may be my last time but if it is I'm gonna give God my best I'm gonna give God my all I'm gonna give God what's due him and that's my reasonable service just to praise his name and glorify him and magnify him on today hallelujah 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 the atmosphere is right the atmosphere is right for a blessing. It's right for the movement of God. It's right for a miracle to happen in this room. It's right right now. Hallelujah in this place. Glory be to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we got to get into this word on today. Hallelujah. But I find it not robbery to give my God my praise. To give my God my glory. I'm not going to say sorry. I'm not going to make an excuse. Hallelujah. I don't even beg your pardon. But I'm going to give God my best. Why I have breath in this body. Why I have sound in my voice. I'm going to say hallelujah. I give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. God, because you've been so good to me. Hallelujah. Because you touched the situation. Hallelujah. Because you healed my body. Hallelujah in this place. Oh, we got to get into this word. Hallelujah. Come on, right where we are, we're going to pray. Father God, in your mighty name, Jesus. Lord, we ask that your spirit continue to be in this place. God, that as your word begins to manifest itself, God. Lord, I ask that you use me for your service. Hide me under your anointing one more time. Kill this flesh right now, God. Let your spirit speak up even more. God, I need the movement of your power in this place right now, God. So, God, I ask that you have your way in this word. Have your way, God. Let it fall on first ground. Let it reap a harvest in the lives of your people. I just want to be used by you, God. Use me like never before. Use me as a pen in a writer's hand that your word may be forever etched on the heart strings of your people. And God, I thank you right now for the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. God, I I say amen. I say amen again and again. Hallelujah in this place. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 We, we want to Hallelujah. 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 
want to draw our minds. Draw our minds to the word on today. Amen. For the word in, uh, found in one of the gospels, the gospel called Mark on today. <clears throat> We're going to find and look at uh, a story. It's none, uh, not like it's uh, anything different than uh, some of the other uh, stories and accounts. Hallelujah. But I thank God for God's word. <clears throat> Being uh, as it is, stable and, and old, but it's forever new in our hearts and our minds each time we read it. And I thank God for seeing uh, what he has for us today uh, in his word. Now, Mark's writings uh, in, in this uh, gospel, he, he wrote a little different than uh, some of the other gospels. He would lean more towards the uh, miracles and things that uh, Christ did and he would also um, use the uh, regular Hebrew uh, dialect for certain words at certain times uh, and uh, mark the uh, this is not our, our, our foundation scripture our foundation scripture is going to be coming from uh, mark the uh, seventh chapter uh, we're going to be at 31 to 37 but in uh, uh, some of the earlier writings of Mark, uh, we find that uh, he begins to show us some Hebrewic names or, or terms that Jesus used. And when Jesus did this, uh, he used it in reference to either a healing or to explain something uh, for them to understand uh, right planed out. But we find here, uh, in, even in Mark, the fifth chapter, we find in verse 1, Jesus, when he was dealing with that uh, damsel who had died, and uh, he, they thought that where it was all, all hope was lost and all those things, Jesus just simply uh, used, uh, in, in the Hebrew tongue, he, Jesus just said, uh, Talithi kumai, meaning damsel arise. And then Mark records that and he shows us how Jesus used this uh, native tongue or this language uh, to lead the Kuma. And then we understand that as we look further into Mark's uh, uh, chapters, we find that even in chapter uh, seven early on, when Jesus was talking to uh, these uh uh, different ones and uh, these Pharisees and these ones that was around him, he began to talk to them because they was desiring a gift and they were desiring things uh, from him. And Jesus simply told them in chapter seven, he was like, uh, is this Corbin? And this Corbin is simply means a gift. He said, is this a Corbin or a gift that I should give to you? And, and, and I want you to understand that because when I give you the title on today, amen, I want you to understand understand the meaning behind the title. The title for this message is Ephida. Ephida. Y'all probably ain't never heard it. Ephida. And Ephida means to be open. And you'll see it in a second. When we look into this uh, scripture, when we look into the scripture, uh, and when we look into the scripture in Mark, the fifth chapter, verse uh, 31, uh, we find that Jesus is getting ready to perform yet another miracle. He's getting ready to uh, bless someone. Now, we always talk about how he opened up blinded eyes and, and made the lame walk and all those things. And we said he'd do the deaf ears at times. We, we glance over the deaf ears and the mute uh, being able to speak. But this is one of the uh, messages here where we're going to deal with somebody being deaf and cannot speak properly. We, we want to deal with that uh, on today. Uh, so as we uh, focus our attention, our mind to the opening uh, verse, and, and, and like I said, I, I often give you a background on uh, leading up to this particular uh, moment, but uh, I, I just want to pretty much, you know, jump all in to this message on today. I, I want you to see how uh, Jesus is getting ready to deal with this deaf mute uh, and those ones that is are around him. We, we pick it up in uh, this verse 31 and it says, and again, he departed from the coast of Tyre and Sidon and came unto the Sea of Galilee and through the midst of the coast of Disciples. Now we understand that it's sort of setting the scene or the picture from us. Jesus is now departing and he's going from coast to coast. He's entering into this uh, particular region and this particular part uh, of the town and Jesus is getting ready to be confronted by 
some folks. In verse 32, it, it says this. It says that they bring uh, unto him one that was deaf and had uh, an impediment uh, in his speech. And uh, they beseeched him to put his hands on him. Now, the thing that we have to understand is uh, people come to uh, they come uh, or they were coming around to see Christ because they heard of the things that he was doing. They heard that he was healing. They heard that he was, uh, you know, bringing people back to life and, and that he was opening up blinded eyes and, and all those different things, making the lame walk and, and, and the deaf and the dumb speak and all those. So, so they had to hear of his fame. They had to understand that Christ was uh, there and that he was able uh, or that he could possibly perform this miracle for them. But the thing that I see here in the scripture, and, and sometimes we read something and we miss some key things, uh, in that 32nd uh, verse, uh, it says that they came to him beseeching him to lay hands on them. Now, the thing about it is we always try to put God in a box. We always try to put him in, in a box and, and we want him to do it a specific or a certain way. And, and, and we have to understand that sometimes God takes uh, and he does some unusual things uh, uh, to get us the same result that we were asking for. He, he sometimes uh, uh, does some unexpected things uh, in our life to get us that same result that we asked for, but we focus too much on how we want it. We want you, God, to lay hands on me and uh, this thing uh, uh, be fixed and, and this thing uh, be uh, restored. Oh, yes, that's that's wonderful if, if we could uh, get that done all the time. But sometimes uh, God does some unexpected things uh, uh, and some unusual things for us to understand that he's the same God yesterday, today and forevermore. But he can do some new things. Oh, stay with me just a little bit longer. We, we, we find that, that these uh, men, they, they brought this uh, one uh, to God and they asked him to lay hands on them. They wanted God to uh, touch them in a, 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 a laying hands on way. And, and they began to perceive that uh, if, if he could just get there to Christ, that uh, they could get this issue taken care of. Now, the understanding is they came to him knowing that he was the one that could do it. They came to him understanding uh, with faith in them that this was the man that, that I heard about. This was uh, the Christ, the Messiah that is being spoke about. And this is the one that uh, can do it in my life. So we understand uh, uh, their heart. We understand a little bit about their character. They came to him with faith. And the thing about it is you need a faith in order to get to God. You have to understand that uh, my faith is, is what uh, I lean on. My faith is what uh, tells me uh, about God that, that even, uh, even if I can't see it, even if I don't understand how it's going to happen, my faith tells me that God can do it. And, and because I believe with faith, I understand that God will do it if I ask him to do it. But he wants to do it in his own way. Come on, just a little while longer. We find here in verse 33, it says, And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and he touched his tongue. Now, the thing that we got to look at this here also is Jesus, uh, he pulled this man to the side. Oftentimes, we, we get so caught up in the crowd. We get so caught up in, in, in who's watching and, and, and whose roaming eyes is, is seeing what's about to transpire, uh, transpire in your life. You, you, you got uh, the crowd of gossipers around. You got a crowd of those unbelievers around. That's why oftentimes Christ had to put out the unbelievers. He, he had to uh, cast them out of the room be, before he healed the, the damsel. He, he had to move out the doubters and all those things. Uh, but Christ pulls this man to the side uh, and then Christ begins to uh, let him know that uh, your manifestation of your blessing is about to happen it's about to take place here now the thing that we have to see is that uh, uh oftentimes god wants to get us separated from the crowd Amen. Amen. 
Why do God get us separated from the crowd? Because he understands that if I separate you from the crowd, then you can focus more on my voice. You can focus more on what uh, is about to transpire in the spiritual realm. But when there's too many people around, now don't get me wrong, it's all right to link up. It's all right to two or three to gather together and all those things. It's all right to uh, uh, forsake not the self-assembling, but sometimes it calls for us to steal away by ourselves, uh, to get a little bit of a long time uh, by ourselves, uh, that God can begin to talk to us, uh, and God can begin to move and, and say some things, uh, and we can ask God for some things, uh, and then have faith to believe that he's going to do them in our life, but at, uh, at, at some point in our life, there comes a time where we have to steal away and be alone with God uh, uh, by ourselves. Hallelujah. We, he left them uh, uh, away from the multitude and, and Jesus got them to the side uh, and he did some things uh, uh, that was uh, a little different than what they was asking him. They just said if you would just lay hands on us uh, or on him, he will be made whole or, or he will receive his hearing and he'll be able to speak now. But we understand that Jesus moves in a miraculous way. He moves in an unexpected way. He moves in an unusual way. Now the thing that we have to see here is what uh, Christ was doing was uh, removing the distraction so this man could receive the blessing that he was looking for. I don't know about you uh, but I, 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 at times I need uh, for God to pull me aside. Uh, I need for God to pull me away from the multitude uh, and begin to work on me. Uh, begin to talk to me uh, and begin to bless me because sometimes it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I pray for so many. I fast for so many. I have the weight of so many. But sometimes it's me, God. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Oh, I ain't going to get no help in here today. I understand that you like people to help you. I understand you like people to do it for you. But sometimes I thank God that he has pulled me to the side and I can say God I'm yet your child I'm yet your servant and I stand in the need of a blessing God I need you to open up something I need you to do something for me hallelujah in this place so oftentimes he steals me aside hallelujah hold on to your hat what Jesus was about to do to them, I liken it to this. And, 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 and Jesus, uh, when he came to this man, the Bible said Jesus pulled him aside. He put his fingers in his ears uh, and he said he spat uh, and then he touched the man's tongue. Look at this thing for a second here. I liken it to the power source. When we understand that this man is but yet an outlet and you have an outlet in a wall and in that the outlet cannot do anything of itself. The outlet has no power within itself. And the outlet has to be connected to a conduit. It has to be connected to the wires. And when the wires is connected to the outlet and the outlet and the wires is going back to the circuit box. The circuit box has what we call breakers. And the breakers got to be switched on. And when the switch is thrown guess what? The power goes to the outlet. The outlet has no power by itself. This man was standing there. Oh, I'm going to just go ahead and go ahead and preach this. The man was just standing there. And the man was an outlet. Hallelujah in here. And he was standing there void of power. And Jesus did something unusual. Jesus took his hands as conduits. He took his hands as wires. Jesus poked them in the man's ears. Hallelujah in here. And Jesus being the source of all power. Jesus ignited something in this man when he put his fingers in his ears. That power switch was turned on. Hallelujah in here. Oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But when Jesus touch this man the Bible said come on we gotta jump down a little bit longer in verse 34 it says and looking up into heaven he sighed and said unto him Ephatha 
that is a be open. Hallelujah in here. Oh, we're going to deal with Ephra in a few moments. But Jesus looked at this man. He plugged into his outlet. And Jesus said, turn the power on. He said, I see that you can't hear. I see that you're void of hearing. I see that you had an impediment in your tongue. Because if you can't hear, you don't know how to formulate words correctly. Hallelujah in this place. But thank you, Jesus. Jesus is about to turn the power back on. You better look at somebody next to you. Matter of fact, encourage your own self and say, God, turn the power on. Hallelujah in this place. I don't know about you, but I need God to turn the power back on. Turn the power on, God. Hallelujah in this place. But the Bible said that Jesus sighed in himself. Now this sigh wasn't a sigh of frustration. This sigh wasn't a moan of being upset. This sigh wasn't a sigh of being fatigued. That this man was asking him to do another miracle. This sigh was to let us understand that Jesus genuinely cared about this man's situation. Hallelujah in here. I don't know about you. But I need God to plug into me. I need to get plugged into the source. Hallelujah in this place. Thank you, Jesus. But the Bible said Jesus said something. He said, Ephra, meaning be open. I don't know about you, but I need God to open something for me. I need God to open some doors. I need him to open up a way. I need him to open up some finances. I need an effort right now. I need my life. Hallelujah in here. You better give God some praise right now. Somebody need God to open something up in them. I don't know about you, but when God begin to plug into you, and the power source can turn on there's something down in your spirit hallelujah here the bible call it a quickening it means that electricity is happening it means power is activating hallelujah in here i need my effort i need god to do it for me i need him to open it up for me those doors that were shut I need him to open them up. Those ways that was blocked. I need him to open it up. The floodgates of heaven. I need him to open them up. Do you need an effort today? Hallelujah in here. I ain't saying an enema. I said an effort. Hallelujah in here. Do you need God to open something up in your life on today? Jesus said, that is be ye open up and let me tell you something the bible goes on and says in verse 35 it says straight away his ears was open and the strings of his tongue was loose and he spake plain let me tell you something when Jesus fix it, when Jesus repairs it, when Jesus does it in your life, let me let you know, if you don't understand what straight away means, straight away means what we think it means, it means immediately, it means suddenly, hallelujah in here, it means instantly, the Bible is telling us that when Jesus plugged in, him, and the power was exchanged. This man got healed straight away. Hallelujah in here. If you don't believe me, if you go home today, plug something in the outlet. Plug something in an outlet and then go into your house and click the breaker and see if it's going to work from that source. It will not have power. But when you flip the breaker back and you're connected to the power source, oh glory be to God. It's some power that allows it to function. The Bible said, oh y'all trying to kill me. The Bible said, 
the straight away his ears was open, the strings of his tongues were loose, and he spake plainly, see God don't mess around, when he does something in your life, he does it real well, hallelujah here, it didn't take a long while, it didn't tarry too long, the Bible said suddenly, immediately, oh excuse me, straight away, this thing sure enough happened, hallelujah in here, we have to understand something, that you may go to God thinking, that he's unable to answer all your prayers, that he's unable to do the things that you need him to do, multiple things, but my God is able, sometimes we go to him with a problem, we have multiple issues, We've triggered through the issues. And we say, this one, I need him to work on. I need him to do this and that. And he said, I know your thoughts. I know them from afar off. He said, I understand what you're standing in need of. He said, in all these things that you stand in need of, he said, I'm able to do it. Hallelujah. He said, I'm able to do it. What are you saying, brother pastor? I'm saying that if I bring it to God, if I bring all my troubles, if I bring all my worries, if I bring all my cares, God is able to do it. He's able to deliver me out of each and every one of them. The Bible said out of them all, all of my persecutions, all of my afflictions, he's able to do it. He healed this man, but some of y'all still missed it. The Bible says straight away, his ears was open, and he put an and in the middle of that thing. He said, and the strings of his tongues were loose. Oh, I feel like one of them old preachers, see? He said, and the strings of his mouth was loose. And he spake plain. When God fixed it, mother, he fixed it sure enough well. When God does it, he does it sure enough well. Hallelujah in here. But the story goes on. It said, Jesus told him. He said, don't say a word. Don't tell anybody about it. I got to laugh within my spirit. Because Jesus, you just opened up my ears. Jesus, you just opened up my mouth. Jesus, you just healed my body. And you're telling me not to tell somebody. You're telling me not to broadcast it. Hallelujah in here. This man went about, the Bible said, broadcasting it, telling people all about Jesus, telling them what Jesus had done. The Bible said it published abroad. Hallelujah in here. Let me tell you something. When Jesus touched me, when he gave me an effort, when he opened some things up for me, I couldn't help but to tell somebody. I couldn't help but to say how good he was, how great he was, how magnificent he was, and what he has done for me. I shall not sit down on my prayer of what God has done for me. Hallelujah in this place. Thank you, Jesus. That when they saw it, they said, this is an amazing thing. This thing that has happened is beyond measure of astonishment. We don't understand this. This man been deaf for a long time. This man couldn't speak. This man couldn't say anything. And Jesus connected with him, plugged him into the power source, and began to move on his behalf. He healed this man's body. Hallelujah in here. And when God does something, he does it sure enough well. The Bible said the man spoke plainly. Hallelujah in here. You might have missed it, but the man had a speech impediment. He couldn't hear, so he couldn't understand how to formulate words. And he was probably mumbling at the mouth. But thank you, Jesus. When Jesus touched him, it was no need for hooked on phonics. It was no need for therapy. It was no 
no need for rehab. This man began to speak clean. Hallelujah in this place. When Jesus opened you up, he does it sure enough well. He fixes it sure enough. And you'll do the things. Hallelujah in here. That will astonish and amaze others around you. Was not they. The ones that was deaf. Was not he. The one that could not speak. Hallelujah in here. It amazed everybody around you. So I want you to look at yourself. And look at yourself real good. Because what you are seeing. Is what others are seeing. And they're seeing something amazing. They're seeing what God has done for you. They're seeing what God has blessed you. Hallelujah in here. I want God to F it up. Just scream open. Open God. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour me out these blessings. I have not room to receive. Open me up God. That I'm sure enough exposed unto you. That you can fill me up with your glory. Fill me up with your glory. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I need God to do some things. I need him to open up some things. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, right where you are, right where you are. Right where you are. Hallelujah. God, you spoke a word. Word that many could understand, God, but you gave translation. Lord, you said that for You said be open. God, we ask that you do it right now, God. Do it for your people, God. God, you know what it is, God. They need open in their life. God, healing. Blessings, God. Mercy, God. Grace, God. Hallelujah. Open it up right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Open it up for us, God. In the name of Jesus. Show us the way, God. Open it, God. Show us the way, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we just thank you right now, God. We thank you right now, God. For your grace, your mercy towards us. God, we thank you, Lord. For being who you are. For being our Alpha and our Omega. For being our beginning and our end. Hallelujah, God. We thank you on today. So, God, we ask now, Lord, that you touch us. Touch each and every situation. God, we ask that you loose right now, God. For Lord, you said that he was healed there, God. You said that he was loosed there, God. You said that he was opened up, God. Lord, we ask that you do it for us today. Loose it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Anything that's not like you in this place, God, we ask that you remove it right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would just continue to bless us, God. Continue to move by your spirit, God, in our lives on today. God, we ask now that you look on the unsaved, God. If there's one in this place, dear God, if there's one listening, God, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would save them right now. Lord, for you have pulled on their heartstring, God. Lord, you have called on them, God, to be saved and set free from this world and the things of this world, from the sinful life, dear God. Lord, we ask that you would save them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. You said all we got to do is call on your name, Jesus. You said all we got to do is believe, dear God, who you are. God, and we shall be saved. God, save them on today. God, and we just thank you. We worship you. We praise you for that soul that is being saved right now. God, we thank you for the rejoicing of your angels, dear God, for that soul that is being saved. And God, we just worship you. We honor you. We adore you. God, and we thank you in advance for the things that you have already put in place. God, we just ask that you continue to be with us. Lead us and guide us. 
Hallelujah. In this life and in this world, God bless us in a special way. God, and we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty and master's name we pray that all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and tell them you love them. Come on, mean it in your heart on today. God bless you. Jesus loves you.